Hello, I'm Julie Richardson Waller Coffin. I'm Justin Waller's mother, and for the past 12 hours, I have been horrifically watching his videos. Absolutely devastated at the lies that he's been telling all of you. Yes, <laughs> it is true that it's 17, not 18. I met a sexual predator, his father. He was a boss of mine at Mr. Cook's, not McDonald's. He encouraged, all I wanted to do was go to college. And he said, oh, stop traveling with your parents and go to college right here. Everything will be great. And I was a 17-year-old girl being manipulated by a 27-year-old man. I tried to get away. And he is very abusive and he's very controlling. I did everything within my power to get away from him and I finally did. Only to find myself pregnant with Justin's little sister and another shotgun wedding where I felt forced. And this was in the 80s. To get away, I went to South Carolina where my family was because Justin Waller's father was literally shooting shotguns at the house, even with the kids there. And he tells a story about being beat up, seeing his father being beat up by his stepfather. But what he doesn't include is that his father was coming at me with a knife and his stepfather protected me. And that's the rest of that story. And all of these, I'm sure, can be looked up at, any, at the Richland Parish Sheriff's Office for validation. I have no reason to lie about this. At the end of the 1980s, I had gone to South Carolina to get away. My parents were trying to help me. Doug sues me for custody and uses the fact that Phil Cawthon, Justin's stepfather, followed me. And at that time, living with somebody was immoral. I was given 30 days to get married or lose custody of my children. I would have married the devil himself to keep my children. I would have done anything to keep my children. So I married Justin's stepdad. And to keep the travel time down, trying to go from South Carolina to North Louisiana with joint custody, we moved back to Baton Rouge. And he talks a lot of really nasty things about the Denham Springs. But even at a young age, Justin showed tremendous athletic ability. Even at four years old, he was playing with the five and six year olds because he was so good. And I knew I needed to get him somewhere that his talent could grow. And we looked around. And in the Baton Rouge area, Denham Springs, not only had the best education for that area, but the best baseball program and the best football program. And I couldn't give my son the private school I wish I could, but I could give him the best thing I could get, close to it. And so we bought a house just to make sure that Justin had opportunities because I knew he had a learning disability. When Justin was younger, you know, he was diagnosed with ADD. And many, many nights I would have to go through a meditation with him to calm his mind down and a lot of this self-affirming things that he's got going on he learned from me uh, i was a huge fighter for him and got involved with no child left behind and made sure that he had the 504 modifications that he needed and when his brothers also showed the same add autistic epileptic type of tendencies. I opened a special needs daycare and I specialized in children that had ADD and going through the state like I did I was able to take college courses and really learn what was going on and, and how, to, how to approach a special needs child and teach him. But I also did it so that I could be free to go up to the school and have those 504 modification meetings with the teachers. So I would be available for him for after school to make sure that he got to practice because I knew 
his athletic ability was going to surpass his learning disability. I believed in him from the moment he was born. I knew he was going to be spectacular. He had to be. You know, I never filed once, not once. And like I said, that can be found at the Richland Parish Courthouse. But every time I had a baby, or we bought a new house, we bought a new car, Doug Waller, Justin's father, filed for custody. And he swore to financially ruin us. What I was doing in the meantime is to play, Justin needed to play all the balls. He played fall ball, he played spring ball, he played baseball in the um, summertime. I had coaches knocking on my house doors, coming in wanting me to put him on their team and, and sponsorships and that sort of thing. And here I was working 10, 12 hours a day. The special needs daycare dealing with all of these demanding little children. Plus we had five children, just as the oldest. So to pay for that, in the evenings, I went and I took care of handicapped people or elderly people. I bathed them, cleaned their houses, made sure they had dinner. So I would have money to fight for custody. So I would have money so that Justin could play baseball. <sighs> you know, I am a very loving woman. And I believe that God put me in a position to help others. I was given three boys with learning disabilities. And I took that challenge. I opened the first ever special needs daycare. And all of those kids have succeeded. And Justin may talk badly about Denim Springs but what he didn't tell you is that his grandfather, a fabulous musician and brilliant scientist, literally rode a train from Mobile, Alabama to Denham Springs because we had family there. And you know what he used to tell us? The best people in the world live in Denham Springs. They're not trailer park trash. Little of them are a little over enthusiastic Christians give them that but they're good people they're good people in Denham Springs I helped start a organization called women outraging women it was the first domestic violence agency in Livingston Parish and I worked directly with the Sheriff's Department my second husband was just as jealous as my first you're a charismatic, loving woman, and people love you. And you are married to an insecure man. The first thing out of their mouth is she's got to be cheating on me. Why do all these people love her? And Justin has taken the insecurity of an abusive man, a vile, vindictive, predatory man, and made it part of a twisted story that is an absolute lie. Absolute lie. But I understand now. 2014, almost my entire family was diagnosed with cancer and I was one of them. I've always been very holistic. I'm not able to take a lot of medications. And I was diagnosed with cancer too. And I fought it holistically but I knew I had to change my mindset and everything about it. And I also had heavy metal poisoning and I was able to find a doctor in Colorado that was looking into B17 for treating breast cancer. But I also found Colorado to have a lot more organic food and a lot more organically thinking people. And I needed to really heal from the heartache that came along with breast cancer and in the way that things ended up panning out. In 2017, my breast cancer came back and I turned to my son and I said, I need some help. I need to be treated again. 
And his exact words to me was, Mama, it gives way more money than you will ever need. I don't think it's my responsibility to help you. I was so hurt. Oh my God. Oh my God. So I worked another year and my cancer spread. And at the bottom of this video, I'll put in a link to my GoFundMe. And he hasn't helped me, not one bit. Not one bit. And I understand why now. He had this narrative out there that I was this monster, cheating, horrible woman. Nothing could be farther from the truth. I did everything I could for him. God knows I didn't miss any games. I've got all of his ULM shirts. I've got tickets. I have programs. I have DVDs. I missed nothing. Except for the one year after Hurricane Katrina and I had spinal cord surgery. And then I went in a wheelchair as soon as I possibly could. I want to apologize. bottom of my heart that I raised a man like this that lies to you that has lied all about his family and what he went through whereas the truth would have been just as beautiful there wasn't any sense in saying those horrific things about me <laughs> you won't find anybody else in Denham Springs that'll say that. They will tell you Justin Waller's mother was there for everything. Everything. You know, when he uh, graduated from college, He would call me to be lost after going from this job to the other. And I told him, I said, boy, I'm gonna get you a Tom Tom. He laughed and he goes, why? I got the best mom, mom. Where's that Justin Waller? Where did he go? If you want to speak to me, I'll be happy to hear from you. If you want me to come in for an interview, I'll be happy to do that. You can find a lot of my videos on V Verks on YouTube. I'm a cannabis activist. But when my mother died, I uh, helped a girlfriend start a hospice, so I'm also a hospice activist. I am very passionate about veterans and served over the veterans in, in Livingston Parish. But out here, I helped veterans get their PTSD added to the Colorado Medical, Medical Marijuana Registry. And I'm very passionate about my veterans and, and their service. Um, when Hurricane Katrina hit, I went back and forth in between Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Gustav to D.C. advocating for our homes, for schools, representing our state, fighting for what was right. Kind of known a little bit of a warrior. But Justin didn't tell you that, did he? No, he didn't. My email address is julieannrichardson369 at gmail. I'll put it in the comments. If you'd like to find me on social media, that's me on Facebook. Send me a message. I'm also on Instagram. I want to know if he's hurt you. I want to know if this Alexander 
state has hurt you. I'll help you get out of it. Because I'm not going to let this stand. Justin forgot that his mama's pretty badass too.